Welcome back to the Warframe History Series. To finish 2019 off, I'll be sharing the outcome of one of Warframe's controversies this year, which was between Digital Extremes and Retalius, via a video called The Corruption of Digital Extremes. Before continuing, for those who have no idea of this event, I would highly suggest watching my history episode by clicking the card on screen, or by going to the link in the description. The history video that I'm linking you towards covers everything that occurred at that time, from Retalius's original upload to all the DE comments after the fact, community and creator comments from across the board, and then the conclusion at that time. As for this video, it aims to update you on the changes and events that occurred after that video's upload, so you know exactly what changed and came out of that fiasco over the course of this year. This is due to that video receiving a number of comments that obviously had not seen any follow-up videos that I made, and so I am compiling them all together in today's history episode, so you are completely updated. I will also, near the end of the video, recap the moderators who had left or were removed from their positions over the course of 2019, including those who had left before the upload of Retalius's video, and each moderator's announcement or situation around them stepping down or being removed will be covered. A timestamp to that section is available in the pinned comment, but it is important to know the changes and statements DE made in April of 2019 that I will now cover. On the 5th of April 2019, DE Rebecca released a forum post titled Discord, Chat, Guides of the Lotus, and more, Updates and Conclusions. It read, This post is going to reiterate some old information, present some new information, and leave some discussion points for everyone. It's a big one, lots to cover. Sit tight. Under chat moderation, Rebecca shared. The majority of oversight and reporting goes through paid professionals as of December 2018. Any remaining volunteers are retrained, re-signed agreements, and have new policies about behavior. All behavior has always been logged. The rules followed are DEs and no one else's. Any past transgressions have been dealt with. We don't blame people for reacting poorly to what information was publicly available. People's public behavior on their personal spaces do not reflect DE's views as a company. In this time, there have been organized efforts to falsify reports and clog support. These are examples among many support tickets that have the same paper trail where they show those examples. One, it starts with the user asking about a kick via a support ticket. Rebecca notes that support is always the place to do this, but you don't just clog it. The second stage, DE researches the kick, and three, they find something like the following from the user. Example one, Support ticket conclusion with evidence. User said, they are fags, that's why. Or, support ticket conclusion with evidence. User said, I like my lollies like I like my chicken. White, tender, and moist. And for the third example, it was simply, you're a faggot. Now Rebecca continued, to be extremely clear, our in-game chat is a privilege, not a right. Anyone spamming Nezure as a trap or other permutations of spam and then decree victimhood should not be surprised when we don't reserve suspensions. The majority of offences are temporary in consequence, and can reflect on why you may have gotten kicked in the first place. We will be improving Kickbot's responsiveness and informative nature if kicks occur, but we have no ETA on this right now. That concludes the chat moderation section. Under formal retiring of Guides of the Lotus. This is a difficult decision, especially four years after working with an amazing bunch of hardworking volunteers. The main reason for this is simple. Everyone wants to help, so why don't we open that up to the community at large? Taking its place will be a new system. We learned so much from working with volunteers over four years. Creating a system where helping a noob, having good advice, or being a kick-ass frost can be acknowledged by your fellow Tenno is a path we want to go down. We will have an endorsement feature that allows players to acknowledge fellow Tenno for their honor and actions in-game. Stay tuned for more, it's early days still. The post continues. Communities are public, and we fault no one for wanting information about what they participate in. There's a handful of readers out there who will confuse a program's retirement and replacement with a player-driven system as a mob justice victory. For these people, facts such as retirement conversations internally predating any witch hunts do not matter. Regardless of what conclusions you draw, do not harass anyone as a result of a good change for the community. As we know with Warframe, growth is necessary, and the lessons we learned with and through the guides will be explored on a bigger stage for the community at large. That ends the formal retiring of the Guides of the Lotus program. Next was the creation of a new verified Discord server. 
While we support many English and non-English fan servers, we will be setting up a verified Warframe Discord server that has a handful of goals, and they follow. Establish a DE-led news and events Discord. Shine a light on our players helping players forums through Discord. Extension of our community tools, where they continue. We started Warframe 6 plus years ago, before Discord era. We will simply be using Discord now, more officially, as an extension of our community toolkit. Have a fun, real-time bug bounty area where we seek out reproduction steps for some of the most annoying and worst bugs in the game. And lastly, be a landing spot for our Discord store page. Now that does end the post, but let's go over the thoughts of the players at that time and how things have evolved since then. The Warframe Discord has gone live and is linked in the description for those that want to use it. And since the launch of the Discord, DE have promoted Prime Access, Bundles and Discord Bundles via server channels. The server features a news feed that links to the forums, fan kits, update specific feedback posts, players helping player forum posts, customer support links and links to their weekly live stream. Every now and again, the Discord will also feature Tenno Brainstorm posts where one of the community staff requests submissions or votes for whatever they present. There have been two different Brainstorm posts since release. One asking what primetime drop players would like by using server emotes, and the other was a request for tips for the tip tab that had been added into the game throughout 2019. And lastly, the Discord server outside of specific channels at specific times does not allow for user comments or dialogue. Now, in regards to the Guides of the Lotus retirement, players had asked what would happen to the unique Guides of the Lotus armor and sigil. While DE has not commented, at least to my knowledge, the now prior Guide of the Lotus and user mentioned within the original video by Retalius, and once again, to my knowledge, owner of the Warframe Community Discord server, that being Tobiah, shared the information to players that the Guides of the Lotus have kept both their armor and sigil, as well as their glyph, but the accolade of being a Guide of the Lotus no longer appears on their profile in-game. That accolade would appear next to, if you're a Warframe partner, next to that icon, your translator status, and if you are a Warframe founder, it would appear next to that. The Guides of the Lotus icon in-game on the accolade screen no longer appears, but players who were Guides keep the armor and gear. It should also be said that a number of players who weren't guides had requested that the armor be made available to the public, but DE has not commented on the armor and sigil at all. Now, in reaction to the closure of the Guides of the Lotus, players shared their condolences to the members of the system, while members of it had celebrated their time helping players, sharing certain situations, or just thanking DE for being a part of it or while other players celebrated its retirement. Now, as for the replacement system mentioned throughout DE's post, as of recording, that has yet to be implemented into the game or mentioned by DE themselves since the original post's launch. However, players at the time had shared their support, but also their fears and thoughts about this system based on the little information we had through the post. With some users sharing that an endorsement system would be a great improvement from a limited user selection based system. Others had also shared their concerns that the proposed system will fall to the same elitist hierarchy, reward chases and visibility issues that the guides had. Either way, possible issues with an endorsement system were presented by the community. Some include players exploiting the system by making alternate accounts to boost their own status. If the system uses both a positive and negative rating style, some players could downvote others and leave negative ratings for petty reasons such as not using a meta setup or what have you. In the case that DE added the rewards to the system, you would have users only engage in the system to get the reward, which had been brought up with a suggestion of tying the Guides of the Lotus armor and sigil to the endorsement ranks, as mentioned before. Either way, that was the discussion that had occurred at the time, but now the Guides of the Lotus has retired, and that program is no longer active. Let's move on to the overall post. Now, the comments made throughout the post were criticised by the community for being unnecessary, concerning, as well as being condescending. Players mostly had an issue with the following paragraph. Communities are public, and we fault no one for wanting information about what they participate in. There's a handful of readers out there who will confuse a program's retirement and replacement with a player-driven system as a mob justice victory. For these people, facts such as retirement conversations internally predating any witch hunts do not matter. Commentators at the time had highlighted that this specific statement was contradicting the evidence at hand. That evidence being the post changes and enforcement were the exact points presented within Retalius's original video and were made after the video's uprising, growth, and overall player support. 
with one user on the forum sharing the following, although keep in mind this is not the full post that they made. This is a big step in the right direction, but I find a lot of the language you use here very condescending, dismissive and overall concerning, to the extent that I'd almost call it gaslighting the community, which hunts mob justice and a general attitude of we don't blame you for your entirely reasonable concerns and criticisms and we were already going to do this, this wasn't for you and we want you to know that this wasn't for you. Come on Reb, you guys are better than that. It's okay to accept the criticisms you were getting, make steps to change and do better, and move forward with humility. There's really no need to try and make it seem like DE was actually right and the community was wrong all along, as seems to be the subtext here. Quote, We don't blame people for reacting poorly to what information was publicly available. End quote. You don't blame us? Really? I don't think there's any world where they would be blamed to be placed on us, for the behaviour of your chosen chat moderators. Quote, People's public behaviour on their personal spaces do not reflect DE's views as a company. End quote. Yes, they do. They do when they identify themselves as chat moderators who publicly bragged about their influence and lack of accountability, and when there's known cases of Guides of the Lotus having been removed from the program for their behaviour on their personal spaces. Keeping them where they were for as long as you did was a direct endorsement of their behaviour. Quote, there have been organised efforts to falsify reports and clog support. These are examples among many support tickets that have some paper trail. End quote. There is always going to be people that do or say shitty things and claim innocence. Claiming it's an organised effort to falsify reports and clog up support is disingenuous at best. Quote. There's a handful of readers out there who will confuse a program's retirement and replacement with a player-driven system as a mob justice victory. For these people, facts such as retirement conversations internally predating any witch hunts do not matter. End quote. The point they're making here is you, the community, didn't win, and we didn't do this for you. We did this because we were already talking about it, which is almost certainly untrue. Don't ever doubt the power we have as a community. Don't ever forget that they wouldn't still be doing this without us. The content creators who wouldn't let it be swept under the rug and the community who let it be known that that shit wasn't okay made a difference. They can downplay the effect the community outrage had, but they know and we know what went down. This is a win for the community. Do not let them tell you otherwise. Quote, For these people, facts such as retirement conversations internally predating any witch hunts do not matter. End quote. I find this bit particularly concerning, the downplaying of legitimate concerns by calling it a witch hunt. It is not a witch hunt if there's evidence of shitty people doing shitty things. I wish DE would stop trying to play the victim every time they get harsh criticism. Quote, Everyone wants to help, so why don't we open that up to the community at large? End quote. I like this idea overall. It should have been like this in the first place. Hopefully this endorsement thing is easy and intuitive in a way that would incentivize players to actually use it. I'm imagining something like the honor system in League of Legends where it's super easy to just click the this player was nice and helpful button. Users had also shared concern with DE stating that people's public behavior on their personal spaces do not reflect DE's views as a company. With one user saying, they might not represent DE's views, but they are the public faces of DE, and so represent DE itself. They also once again brought up Fostinator's removal from the Guides of the Lotus after a political discussion on Twitter with AGGP, which resulted in Fostinator being removed, Fostinator making a video, and then DE rescinding an offer to rejoin once they had seen the video was uploaded. Players had also shared concern with DE stating that all behavior has always been logged, with a user saying, all those instances of mods abusing their power for years? According to the post, DE had it logged and knew about it for years, and as far as we can see, has only begun introducing changes in the past three or four months. That's an incredibly slow response time to a problem that's been happening for quite a while, and it's pretty frustrating to hear. While I am glad to see that they appear to be moving forward, I am not optimistic since they've shown that it takes multiple controversies before something meaningful is actually done. Now as for Retalius, to my knowledge, he shared the following tweet on the 6th of April about the post. The Guides of the Lotus is being shut down. A DE-created official Discord has been made. DE Scott talks about a Vorban rework. We did it, boys. And that ends that. 
Now, in regards to other feedback and suggestions, they of course were presented, but like usual, all the links to the sources are in the description, so if you want to read through it all, they are available to you. So, we now continue to what happened to the moderators who had been mentioned in Retalius's original video, as well as prior sources and situations. On the 1st of February 2019, according to Shadow via Twitter, they have quit moderating. On the same date, it was shared by L Magnus one on the Warframe subreddit that Telluric had either lost his position as a chat moderator or left the position themselves. Either way, Telluric is no longer a chat moderator. However, this announcement came via a Twitter post which was shared by L Magnus one to the Warframe subreddit, titled, I think DE should be given some credit where it's due. Keep in mind, I'm about to say it, and it is, I guess, pretty vivid, so let's get into it. Hey, the best part of no longer being a chat mod is now I can say fuck. Hey, fuck the entire Warframe subreddit. Everyone there is a fucking incel who gets off to lolly porn and transphobic fetish garbage. You're all shit and I fully intend to watch out for you guys in chat. And make sure you're all reported, cause it's personal now bitch. God, why didn't I quit sooner? I have so much fucking power now. I can do whatever the hell I want. I am fucking unchained and I am absolutely bursting at the seams with raw energy. I am going to make everyone's chat lives absolutely hell. And now, I can get away with it. Bear in mind that I fully intend to stay in the confines of the chat rules because I know them very well. I also intend to bother absolutely no one except for the people that have made my life hell because now I can finally do whatever the hell I want in chat in that regard. End quote. Our Magnus had compiled a list of links, recaps, warnings, and suggestions in the Reddit thread, and one of the links takes us to an image showing that Telluric's Warframe profile had been viewed by both DE Danielle and DE Rebecca at some point. Either way, Telluric is no longer a chat moderator, whether DE removed him or he left. Now the following story of events is around the at the time chat moderator of server. On the 17th of May 2019, a tweet was highlighted on the Warframe subreddit by user Lord Taco the Great via the thread title, There is no justification for spoiling the game for new players. Now the tweet was made on the 16th of May by server, and it reads, Wanna know something awful? Whenever I see a new player being dragged to Hydron by their friend, I spoil the second dream in chat. If you are going to rush them to Hydron, which is past the second dream, then you're ruining the game for them. Now the community supported and reacted to the post. Some shared that using the operator in mission is not spoiling the game for possible new players, but explaining the reveal, what they are, and the quest is. In this case, the community highlighted how server had admitted to breaking the moderator code of conduct. Specifically, quote, a moderator will not bully, threaten, or suggest malice. To my knowledge, Retalius himself had shared an image which had been created from, I believe, Lord Taco the Great, 2DE. The image shares the aforementioned highlighted line from the moderator code of conduct, server's tweet, and the definition of malice. The intention or desire to do evil, ill will. Server doubled down on their post on the 17th of May by saying, you know, I was wondering why this got 20 replies. Turns out Reddit is at it again. By the way, you shouldn't drag your friends into endgame content early. Play the game. And then, on the 18th of May 2019, Server updated their Twitter announcing their removal from the position of chat moderator by tweeting. After two years of moderation, it's time to wrap it up. By request of DE, I am leaving the moderation program. I would like to thank the people I've had the chance of working with, many of which I am lucky to call my friends. Thank you for all the good times. This decision came after my tweet about spoiling Second Dream in Hydron to new players. Since moderation changes, the team has been serious about making it better. I was not above the rules, and I did break them. So let's be upfront about that. I worked with wonderful moderators, and since the moderation overhauls came into play, DE Bear has been a fantastic leader in the program, being fair and balanced with decisions. Please community, you don't have to trust me, but trust Bear. Now the post does continue, but the rest of it is irrelevant for this video. If you wish to read it, there are links in the description, and it's probably up on your screen now. It should also be mentioned that Rebecca at the time had redirected a Twitter user to the announcement as shown on screen. As for the reaction to the removal of server, users had celebrated the removal of server, some had also praised them for the calm announcement on Twitter without public issue. 
Now on Reddit, as they did with Tuluric, users posted abusive mod is gone, linking to the crab rave music video, and of course making memes. One user said, good, no more confusing names masquerading as a system message, and another said, abusing mod privileges, DE sleeps. Promoting double standards on chat bannable offences, DE sleeps. Spoiling Warframe's lore, real shit. And lastly for this story, this is the first major step in trust between us, the community, and DE when it comes to those moderation changes. They didn't deliver us blood, like a lot of us wanted, but instead gave these moderators a new chance with a new code of conduct. When someone messed up, they didn't make up excuses and keep them around. Instead, they removed them from the team as promised. I'm not saying we should completely trust DE now, but this is a massive step in the right direction, and it looks like they're actively holding to what they promised. This is good news. In regards to the third party chat moderation team, I have not seen or heard anything about it from DE or the community over the course of this year, so there is nothing to report on there. I should also mention before continuing that Ashisogi Tenno is now a Warframe partner. This had been announced on the 3rd of May with his video titled Never Partner, Wait. I would also like to chime in for a second and share that this video is not to say that there are no longer issues with moderators, chat, nepotism, partners, double standards, or whatever you have criticized Warframe for, brought to light, whatever. Because the next story from October of 2019 shows us this. On Reddit, a user shared a story with the title, I apparently harassed DE Glenn and here is my story. From what has been shared by DE and what will be stated in this post, players should receive a chat suspension. This means the chat suspension in-game rather than a account suspension. In this case, DE Glenn issued an account suspension to a user for saying what I'll soon cover through the post. So let me read the post to you and then we'll get to DE's official reply after the post has been read. Let's start this off with a bit of backstory. I'm a man, a young adult, I'm deeply in love with another man, who feels the same for me. You'd be right to say that I'm pretty gay. Love the inclusion of some LGBT elements in Warframe and really hoping they fix their kickbot from overzealously banning anything quote unquote offensive with a kind of tolerance similar to Club Penguin. Shockingly DE, the term gay actually does come up in non-pejorative contexts. Anyways, I laugh at memes. I've been on this subreddit for years, occasionally posting or commenting. I have been a long-term player of the game, but most of the time I don't type much in-game chat, except a GG at the end or talking in spy missions. Well today, I made a joke using the word gay in a reference to the big gay meme. Not sure how big that meme is, but in my circle of friends, it's referencing catching the big gay, a parody of the belief that it's an illness. And it wasn't Kickbot that booted me for using the word, not that Kickbot cares if you're using the word legitimately. It was D.E. Glenn in a Match of Elite Sanctuary Onslaught, where he shows the image on screen that says, I love Limbo, love heart. User, he's the big gay, Lemayo. JK though, he's great. The post continues. So here I am laughing at this dumb joke when I look over at the teammates we had. One of them was D.E. Glenn. Oh my god, I laughed off the possibility of a ban, but it was too soon to laugh. Then my friend in game mentions to me that I was kicked. What? I was clearly in the game. I could see chat. But apparently not. They couldn't see my messages. Indeed, I was banned. So I sent messages explaining myself to DE Glenn, which apparently still works, and he sent one condescending reply, with once again the post on screen showing that conversation. User. Did you really kick me? Dude, I'm not being homophobic or anything. I have a boyfriend and am male. I just thought that was a funny thing to say. It got my friend to laugh. Where DE Glenn replied, Dude, sexual preference isn't a joke. Grow up. Where the user replied, Oh, wow. What kind of reaction is that? I'm gay. The post continues. Well, that's the whole thing. Now I'm banned for a bit. It cut me off before my rewards were sent back to the server, so he killed 10 rounds of rewards just for me. He wasn't even playing the game. He was a complete leech, where he then shows another image on screen that says account suspended until October 12th, 2019 due to harassment. And here we continue the post. Thanks, Glenn. I didn't realize that the mature rating meant that I had to act mature and proper. Homosexuality isn't a joke, but I'm going to joke about it because it's way more fun if you don't take things too seriously. Saying that homosexuality is off limits to joke about, even if you're homosexual or LGBT, is segregating it when we should be normalizing homosexuality itself. The big gay isn't serious. It's a dumb meme. Oh well, see y'all in a week. Please don't ban me here for saying gay, where he directs that final sentence towards the Warframe subreddit. He later added to his post in response to the community support, saying, 
edit one. Well, this has received a lot of support and some comments who believe he's just laying down the rules on potentially offensive phrases. I respect the counterpoint. I've sent in a report not to get my account appealed, but to get this investigated. DE has historically shown that they're very defensive of stuff in these community affairs. So we're going to see how this plays out and hope they don't just ban me forever. It's ridiculous that people are afraid of speaking around stuff and moderators in game for fear of instant bans. Edit 2. I've got to sleep, but this gained a ton of traction. I've read most of the replies and have a lot of responses. Yes, I know what I said can be interpreted as offensive, especially to someone who doesn't know me. But I was given no chance to explain myself and was given a ridiculous penalty, a full suspension for three to four days rather than a chat ban as is appropriate. And the guy himself was busy breaking rules while banning me. As he spent the match AFK, you can see him in the same place on the map in the second link for quite some time. And I know being gay doesn't give me the right to be homophobic, it was background to the reason why I use that meme. If you're offended by something that's said and you refuse to talk about it, then you're going to be hurt by a lot of people who aren't trying to hurt you. It's how you treat those groups that determine if you're actually discriminating, and I'm pretty damn sure I don't go around discriminating against and hating gays. Good night Tenno, be kind to each other. Final edit. Woke up today to find I've been unbanned by support. DE Scar and DE Sully responded to the issue and instated a chat ban instead of a full suspension. That's pretty much what I expected. Ultimately, they still aren't pleased with how I use the term gay, meme or not and I can respect that. Ultimately, I feel they kind of skated over him being AFK in the game without addressing it. The user had then shared the support message, first with DE Scar at 8am. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. The use of the term gay has been removed as an acceptable term in chat due to the sheer volume of users who use it to purposely berate and offend some members of our community. As such, it is no longer allowed in-game and generally results in a one-week chat suspension. For the most part, this is common knowledge. The fact that someone simply received a kick is already lenient. Where DE Sully followed up at 1pm, please accept our apology for the previous response you received. You will find that the 3 day game suspension has been cleared from your accounts, however the 7 day chat restriction will remain in place per our standard practice in situations like this. We regret how your situation was handled and are taking steps to ensure that proper procedures are followed in future situations of this nature. Please also allow us to clarify our stance on the use of the term gay in Warframe chat. Due to the term's historic use of a means to marginalize a segment of the population, if someone uses the term gay as an insult in any context, whether it be with a dev or otherwise, they risk having their account temporarily restricted. Note that this applies to any term used to disparage a group of people based on race, sexuality, religion, ethnicity, etc. We apologize for any inconvenience this situation might have caused you, but please understand our need to keep Warframe safe and welcoming for all players, regardless of their backgrounds. Thank you for understanding and for your continued support. And the post finishes with a user saying, I'd like to put emphasis on the second reply first paragraph. We regret how your situation was handled and are taking steps to ensure that proper procedures are followed in future situations of this nature. I hope this means that he'll be expected to go through the right channels next time instead of banning outright with his dev powers. Now this post, as mentioned beforehand, gathered major positive support and at the time of posting went straight to the top of the Warframe subreddit. This led Rebecca to respond to the post with the following statement. There are several things to cover here. Apologies for the delayed reply. The offense. Fundamentally, if someone uses gay as a derogatory term in any context, with a JK follow-up or otherwise to defuse the prior use, meme or otherwise, it can't be tolerated. It would be unconscionable to allow derogatory use of marginalized communities, but only if followed by JK. We won't do that. Under the title, The Punisher. How that impacts your feelings about a dev is one thing, but if someone said Baruch is the big gay to me in chat, I would have dealt with the behavior too. This account will have the normal consequences applied to it that any other account would in this case, which have been dealt with in a support ticket with a restored account. Under the title, The Rest, the short fact is that while we aren't replying to every accusation, we are reviewing them and will ensure this doesn't happen again. And that does conclude Rebecca's reply and the only reply to this situation. At the time of covering this story in Last Week in Warframe, Rebecca's statement sat at minus 333 points with multiple player responses to it, but at the time of writing this script, it now sits at minus 326. A few of the replies to Rebecca's post follow. Why do you give your developers in-game admin privileges in the first place? 
That's not their job. If I was playing WoW, for example, and happened to be in-game with a developer, they couldn't just type some command and ban me on a whim, even if I did something wrong. That would be the job of the support staff who are trained to deal with that situation and who have some specific set of rules they are familiar with to hopefully attempt to consistently enforce. Even if you decide that the ban was justified, he still shouldn't have had the ability to do it himself on the spot in the first place. Why does Glenn even have the ability to ban people? Shouldn't he have to send screenshots or chat logs to support just like anyone else? Now Rebecca actually replied to this post saying, Yep, that's the procedure and will be enforced. This post is sitting at minus 100 points as of recording the video and one of the responses follow which was, If that is the procedure, why was Glenn allowed to ban him then and there? You say it is the procedure to enforce, but it doesn't seem like it's actually enforced will be enforced, suggesting it hasn't been in this instance as of yet. Will you also enforce the rules against leeching or continue letting it slide because he has DE in front of his name? Either way, we return back to Rebecca's initial reply and the comments for that follow. Reb, we love you guys. I know you have the best intentions, but this kind of word ban is actually harming the people you want to protect. I'm a woman who is in love with another woman. Seeing this makes me think that we're not allowed to express ourselves. Here is the result, a gay man getting banned for saying something, a joke about his own identity which doesn't even offend him on the first place. What are the normal consequences for this account, and how are you making sure this doesn't happen again? Could you provide us with the explanation of what the derogatory context was in this instance, since you've promised multiple times to improve chat moderation, yet no progress towards that end at all? Maybe clarifying the rules with concrete examples like this could help. If your definition of what constitutes a derogatory use of the word isn't clear or changes randomly, that means you're treating the word itself as an insult, which is problematic. I really hope you could clear this up. Context in sensitive bands should be extremely rare. Like dropping a hard R is probably one of the few that is guaranteed to be bannable regardless of context. We kind of ran into this issue before with the moderation bots and the word trap, a word commonly used in the context of games. In a given context, it can be perceived as derogatory as well. Then again, there's a whole argument to be had over that actually being offensive or not, as it's a mixed bag of negative and positive means. The big gay is similar to that in a sense that it's generally used to mock people who think homosexuality is an illness, rather than to harass an individual's sexuality. Blocking the usage of gay in any context also results in individuals who identify as such feel as if they're not able to express it or you have. What I'm driving at is that the context of these comments should be re-evaluated as well. Trying to set up bots and hard lists of every given context is an exhaustive task. At some point you have to decide on what simply is not permitted and then rely on player reports to identify bannable behaviour. Language evolves over time and words get co-opted all the time, like trap. But yeah, the original poster trying to say it was a joke bro probably wasn't the best way to convey their point either. Yeah, I'm sharing the same sentiment a lot of the other LGBT peeps in this thread are having. This ham-fisted, scorched-earth approach to moderation is not healthy, it is not safe, and does nothing but silence the people you are trying to protect. You've become the problem at this point when people within a community can't use a tool that they have used to express themselves and fight back against the actual harmful bullshit. The caught the big gay joke is a very common one within the LGBT community that serves the purpose to make fun of when people tried to say homosexuality was a disease. Comedy is inherently a social defense tool, comedy inherently requires a source of misery, and in cases like the big gay joke, it's a means for gay people to fight back against years of harmful propaganda that was lobbed against the gay rights movement. In my opinion, keep that in mind here, the offence. I feel like I have to disagree here. There are certain contexts here that shouldn't be included alongside full-on hate speech contexts. OP seems to have done it to his friend, as he didn't blur the teammate's name, and had a full-on backtrack on the term by not only saying JK, but also saying that they agree. There is a lot saying that it was harmless fun, and nothing actually big saying that OP was doing it to be super homophobic. I'm not saying excuse every JK plus backtrack of sorts, but I am saying that there should be at the very least a little context before immediate suspension of any kind. Because it's important to know the difference between banter with friends and saying that shit in a full-on derogatory way. 
Plus, he even told Glenn straight up the full context of the situation that it was friendly banter and that there is no harm intended in any way. That it was just friends being friends, but Glenn just proceeded to pretty condescendingly say to grow up and proceed to keep leeching. I'll touch on that later. The Punisher. What's important here isn't only the suspension and how fast it was, but also the remarks he made about it. He seemed blatantly triggered over it, which I'm not saying it's okay to trigger people. Also, with your Baruch is a big gay example, it just doesn't work as well because of the specific inclusion of to me in chat, as it wasn't directed at Glenn at all. But as I said before, full context matters. I personally feel like he was a bit immature there, getting seemingly a bit huffy puffy and telling him to grow up. I'm not saying don't ban anyone instantly if they say something stupid or offensive because of a lack of context. I'm talking about this specific setting. If it is in a mission like this, with a joke set up like this, environment as is, like this, personally think Glenn should have at least warned them a bit before instantly suspending them and saying to grow up, after OP explained himself. I feel like there should have been at least some interaction before the suspension instead of him AFK suspending him, throwing a condescending remark, then going back to what he was doing as if nothing was wrong with what he just did. I feel like you saying that you would have dealt with this behaviour too could mean you would handle it in the same way Glenn did, which if you ask me, isn't too healthy in that setting. It only sets a bad example for you guys in my eyes, and I hope that you meant you'd deal with it in a better way when saying that. As for the rest, here is the part that kind of irritated me. You didn't really bother to address the AFK leeching problem much other than just say, we're reviewing them. Yet at least, I'm not sure if you had it planned, I feel like it would have been a bit more satisfactory for us all if you at least commented a little bit towards us on how one of your staff members literally broke a game rule after being, from what I saw and read, very rude. I'm not saying you're forced to address everything, I'm just saying that at least addressing that as well would have been very nice to see. I will end my stupid text wall here by just saying, please actually make sure things like this don't happen again. I love to see an actual change to make sure this doesn't happen, as it's a bad situation that I'd rather not see happen ever again. Though I have my own opinions on Glenn as a whole, I don't feel like there should be more and more things going on that cause outrage towards you guys. But it just keeps happening. A user posted the doubt meme from LA Noir in response to quoting the we'll ensure this doesn't happen again from Rebecca's post. One user shared their own observation which was, I am almost certain that the original poster was banned post kick. He was already punished for his offence because he was explaining himself to Glenn in a non-threatening and non-insulting way after he was kicked, as you can see in those screenshots. He was banned because he consulted to Glenn in DMs for harassment. So basically, what happened is Glenn used his power to ban a player to win a quote-unquote argument. You have dozens of LGBT players, myself included, telling you in this thread that we're tired of our most basic self-identifier being used as grounds for bans. I am gay. I am literally gay. I have a wife whom I love. But saying any of that will get me automatically banned regardless of context. That is not protecting marginalised communities, that is silencing them. You would never ban someone for simply saying they're Canadian, so why is it okay to do it to us? If context matters and it does, then the least you can do is remove gay from the auto-ban list. Disappointing as always. You would think a Canadian company would know better than to follow a zero-tolerance policy like it is an American school system. Quote, Fundamentally, if someone uses gay as a derogatory term, and quote, one, it wasn't used as a derogatory term. Quote, in any context, and quote, one, context matters, such as in the context as to not say these things. Quote, it can't be tolerated, and quote. One, it definitely can. It's a choice not to. Quote, it would be unconscionable to allow derogatory use of marginalized communities, but only if followed by JK. We won't do that, end quote. One, the issue isn't the JK bit. Just get off that. It wasn't derogatory or rude in the slightest. The JK was just a clarification. The fact you're getting triggered on other people's behalf like this, like using the word gay, is derogatory use of marginalized communities, really shows the immaturity at DE, and it's disgusting. Quote, if someone said Baruch is the big gay to me in chat, I would have dealt with the behavior too. End quote. 
you tolerate a guy guy plays who currently calm down a bit, but still has occasional sprees of just dicks and sexual innuendos. Is it okay when he uses gay jokes and gayness as his trademark, but Glenn or you, any DE staff or mod can lecture a random player with sexual preference is not a joke and ban him for that? This thread is a wake-up call for your company policy to be re-evaluated. Most players are respectful, friendly, profanity filter does exist, personal attacks can be reported, no need to lose players tired of SJW nonsense infesting gaming industry. Reb, you know we love ya and the DE team, but this, this is a piss poor justification. Glenn took this way too seriously and frankly your standards should try removing that pointy stick in its ass. What in the actual fuck is the point of humour when saying a harmless joke, if you are harmed by such a thing I really suggest you lighting up, can get you banned? At what point does protecting marginalised groups degenerate into your word hurt my feels so now I'll ban you five ever? Sure, there should be limits, but this is the definition of extreme. The only offence here was Glenn being mentally incapable of taking a joke. All that said, I suggest you take these standards and revise them to be far less on the scorched earth side. Humour is purely subjective, and the moment someone starts dropping the nuclear ban hammer on someone for a joke is the moment you lose the iron tough bonds between us and you. There's the typical response. Sorry, but this is a common response every time something like this happens. If I said half of the stuff Glenn does on the forums, then your mods or bear would constantly get rid of everything I post and I would probably be banned from the forum. Having DE in front of your name doesn't put you above the rules that you're supposed to follow. Lead by example, yes? However, you also tolerate a partner that has gay in his name regardless of you having it as AGGP instead. But that's okay? Does being a founder put him above the rules? Well yeah, we can see it does from various reasons that he gets special treatment. The whole cherry picking when and when not to enforce things is getting a bit old. I also hate admitting it, but I can't trust the whole we'll ensure this doesn't happen again, since it will happen again and again with the same type of damage control response each time. And lastly, a member highlighted, we'll ensure this doesn't happen again. And afterwards said, that's like the third big chat moderation related scandal this year though. It will happen again, and there will be a 5k upvotes, 1k comments, 15 gold thread on Reddit about it. And there will be YouTube videos, and there will be another empty PR response of, quote, it can't be tolerated, never mind that I do it twice a week on Twitch, and quote, and on and on, probably until the end of time. Just grow the fuck up already, and stop behaving like a high school click. Now with the attachment of D.E. Glenn to this story, and of course himself executing the account suspension, it led players to remind each other of other times where Glenn had poor interactions with the community. And the following is one of the most popular comments in reply to the whole entire thread, which has 2,209 points, and states the following. Keep in mind that the photos up on your screen are actually from this situation, so if you want to read what happened at that time, go ahead and do so. Eventually I might actually do a Warframe History episode on DE Glenn and those situations, but for now, that's what you have if you want to read through it, but the reply says the following. Oh, Glenn. Nerf excavation rewards with a poor test sample, Glenn. Lock thread criticizing his decision, Glenn. Encourage rioting and then chat ban people for rioting, Glenn. Lee shoulder of the ridiculous chatbot, Glenn. Ban people for saying the word gay in a game where an official partner has gay in their username, Glenn. Leech on stream, Glenn. Never step up and own up to these mistakes, Glenn. This is par for the course. Out of all DE staff, Glenn is undoubtedly the most disliked member by the community. Somebody even started a change.org petition about restricting and evaluating Glenn's communications with players at one point. He's a walking PR nightmare. If I was ever in a position in which I relied on him for any sort of technical expertise like DE does, I would keep him locked up in some isolated box where he couldn't commit community-related disasters such as this. As per usual, DE will probably slap him lightly on the wrist and temporarily muzzle him until the outrage dies down. Which hopefully isn't for a while. God knows the longer we go without having to add another Patterton Glen moment to the growing list, the better. A few of the responses to this post follow. More likely, he won't even get a slap on the wrist. 
They protect each other no matter how wrong they are. This has been proven time and time again. How is it that Warframe is such a community-focused game that really values the players with things like weekly playing with people's streams, dev stream, constant contests, partners, etc. But just keep on stumbling into these utterly cancerous idiots who couldn't provide enough PR for a crack house and just won't get rid of them when they fail at their basic job. Another, I believe, said the bra moment is now a Glen moment. And lastly, the following post who quoted the here's a walking PR nightmare, where it said, not really. Because DE don't give literally a single fuck about their PR. They just ignore something until it blows over and continue to put smiling people on their developer streams with cherry pick questions that sidestep the topic of their latest fuck up. And by time the next stream comes along with more shiny new content, the people who actually care about the topic of outrage are the minority. Outnumbered by people spouting the latest forced Ram Ranch meme or drooling over Mag's new deluxe skin ass. This is how DE have always dealt with quote unquote PR disasters for as long as Warframe has been a playable game. They have engineered a mechanism for circumventing the need to address their player base about any controversy whatsoever unless they can spin it into a cute story about quote unquote listening to the community. I'll highlight a few more popular posts which were Wake up and smell the double standards. No, but seriously. DE makes sexual jokes on a Twitch stream in front of thousands of people and they don't care. But the moment anyone else does it, suddenly it's not okay. In other words, do as I say, not as I do. Don't bother trying to call them out on Twitter either, they'll call it a personal attack then their white knights will swarm you. Another replying to that, remember when Ram Ranch was a funny dev stream joke for a month, but typing Ram Ranch verbatim in region chat would get you kicked from chat for inappropriate content in an M-rated game, because I definitely remember. And then there was, at first I thought it was a temporary chat ban, since that is what the overly strict kickbot does, but it's an account suspension, damn. And from a dev who allegedly leeched, using a 300 health and shield limbo in ESO, and who is known to leech in his streams. A reportable offence by the way, I have a few gay friends and follow some trans gay YouTubers, and have heard the big gay as an ironic joke a million times by now. Getting offended by that seems real weird to me. That guy has some issues. And then simply put, at this point DE really should just keep their devs and do fuck away with half their community reps since they obviously can't handle PR. Lol. Anyway, on that depressing note, let's finish up the episode with whatever I'm gonna say. Thank you for watching, and if you wish to watch any of my other Warframe History episodes that span from covering the complete launch and run of Nightwave's release, the history of Arcane Helmets, the time Helios' scanning was nerfed and was going to be nerfed further but the community stepped up, the aforementioned timeline of Retalius vs DE's situation, why the Hema's research costs won't ever change, and a look back at when players had to pay to revive if they used them up for the day. That is in the Warframe History playlist. Now this video is simply here to keep you up to date and inform you on what happened after the DE vs Retalia situation early in 2019. So this is every bit of, as, as far as I'm aware, chat moderation drama, changes, events, and whatnot in 2019. You know, I do document this game on a weekly basis, and this is just the information I've heard and shared over the past 11 months in one video. So if I missed anything out, make sure to leave it in the comment section and I'll make it into the pinned comment. But otherwise, this video is just for historic and educational purposes, like usual. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Maybe we'll get one out in another month. Maybe within the next year. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Bye, guys. Goodbye.